So let's do another bridge design example here. So I'm gonna have a canyon here. I'm gonna break my roadway into five pieces so there's five equal loads P. And I'm just gonna sketch very lightly in pencil that I'm gonna want some kind of arch shaped structure that might look something like that. And we're gonna start off with just vertical supports coming from the road down to the arch. So we've done examples like this before. So let's label the region between the forces. And let's label the regions inside the truss here. And now let's use our graphical statics to actually build this structure and get the right kind of angles that we want. So let's start by drawing our load line. And I'm just gonna use one inch for every unit load. So these are my points A, B, C, D, E, and F. And point G here is gonna be located right in the middle. So right here, right dead center between uh, right dead center between point C and D. So there's point G. And so now we're gonna use our graphical technique to build this bridge. So let's start over here with point one. So point one is gonna to connect to A through a horizontal line. G is gonna to connect to one through some angle. And I don't know what I want that angle to be just yet. Uh, but let's kind of start with something like this kind of see how that looks if we like it. So there's my line. That's gonna be point one on my force diagram. So now let's go up and put that same angle on the structure. So we have something like this. Our vertical support would come down here in the center and would connect as such. B is gonna to connect to two through a horizontal line. Two is going to connect to one through a vertical line. So there's point two. And then G and two are going to be connected through this particular angle here. Now we're going to do the same thing to find point three. So point three is located horizontally from C, vertically, it's aligned with point two. And its angle that it makes on the force diagram with G is the angle that we see up here. So there it is, so there's our structure. Now the other half is gonna be the same type of analysis, except it's just gonna be reflected. So let me just go ahead and do that quickly. There's our structure. And we've seen examples like this before, so hopefully this all makes sense. And this shape here of this is the same that we would have if this were a string hanging upside down. But, but now let's consider that when we sometimes we see these structures in real life, we often see some uh, diagonal members that might look something like this. So I'm gonna add some diagonal members here in blue, and I'll show you some examples of some real bridges that have this kind of structure. Uh, at the, after we conduct our analysis. But let's try to understand what these are there, what these uh, blue supports are there for. Because in the loading that we currently have, they do nothing, right? Because the structure was stable before I added them, so they hold no load. So why are they there? To understand why they're there, we have to redo this analysis assuming these loads are not all equal. So just for the sake of argument, let's increase the load here, in this, uh, right in the center, not to P, but let's make it 2P, and let's conduct our analysis again and see what happens, but with these blue supports in there. If we didn't have the blue supports and we increase the load here by a factor of two, we can see that the shape would have to change just as it would if we doubled the weight on a string uh, hanging with equal, five equal weights and we pulled harder on this one, the shape would change. So let's see what happens if we increase the load, but we leave these blue supports in. And so what we're gonna to have to do is label these regions here to have different numbers. So these will be seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
So I'm just going to tape over our uh, last force diagram and draw a new one, except now when I go from C to D, I need to go uh, by an amount of two inches. And just as before, point G is right here in the middle. Okay, so let's do the analysis. So we're going to start off very similar as before, coming out of A with a horizontal line, coming out of G at this angle. So there's point one. Now we have to be a little bit careful. So one is connected to seven through a vertical line. So we have a vertical line coming down like that. G is connected to seven through this angle. So there's point seven. Seven is connected to two through this angle and two is located horizontally from B. Point two is along there somewhere. So there's point two. Two connects to eight through a vertical line. Eight is going to connect to G through this particular angle that we set here. So there's point eight. Point three is connected to C. Through a horizontal line. And eight and three connect through this uh, blue support right here. And there's point three. Okay. And now I think you kind of see the, the pattern here. So now let's go to point four. Four is going to connect to D through that line and through three through a vertical line. Point four. Uh, now we need to locate point nine. G and nine are going to be located on a line like that, and four and nine are going to connect through these. We can kind of see now by symmetry what's going on here. So there's point nine. So I think we kind of see the pattern now, but let's just go ahead and finish it. And there we go, there's our force diagram. So now what we see is that when we have an asymmetric load, when we increase this load in the middle, now these are taking up quite a bit of support. So now we see members two seven, which is this one here, three eight, which is this one here, four nine, which is this one here, uh, are, oops, I'm sorry, I mislabeled my points here. This should be 10 and six. Uh, sorry about that, but I don't want to rework it, so I'm going to leave that error in there. So now we see what these diagonal members are for. When, if we have any kind of dynamic load due to cars going across here, if the load's not equal uh, due to other traffic or maybe wind, uh, then these uh, diagonal supports add stability and begin to take up the load, and they allow the structure not to change shape, right? Because without them, if I add any extra weight at any point, the arch is going to want to change shape. So now for a second, let's just leave our force diagrams up here next to each other. We see a lot of the same basic structure, but we see the loading pattern due to these diagonal elements when we have asymmetry uh, is quite different. So just as an example of the kind of structure we just looked at, this is the French King Bridge in Massachusetts, and we see the arch shape here at the bottom. Again, if we took this uh, image and we hung it upside down and we took like a light chain, we would see that the shape of this arch exactly matches what it would be for something hanging under its own weight. Uh, here we see the vertical supports going down, holding the weight of the bridge, 
and then we see the diagonal members just like we saw in our example. Now, of course, this bridge has a lot more members uh, than the one we did uh, just as a simple example, but you can see that the basic structure is exactly the same.